Hey, Ron Brown here with Kingdom Sports Overtime. Uh, good to be with you. Uh, I want to talk about prayer, but I wanted to talk about the repetition of prayer today. And, and let me uh, start by giving you a sports analogy here, sports parable, so to speak. And I heard this watching uh, uh, maybe some, some show on uh, Coach Krzyzewski, the head basketball coach for Duke University. I think we've all heard of Coach K. He was also the Olympic coach at one time. Uh, the United States team was getting ready to play, and, and uh, he sat him down, um, and he told him, listen, if we're going to win a gold medal in an international game, we're going to have to do two things really well. One, we're going to have to hit our free throws. And number two, we're going to have to hit standstill three-point jump shots. A young, bright-eyed, uh, Guy, I think fresh out of high school, we've all heard of him, Kobe Bryant, raised his hand and said, Coach K, uh, we, who does that? We don't take standstill three-point jump shots. And Coach K said, men, there are two things that you're going to have to do to win a gold medal uh, in the Olympics, and that is you're going to have to hit your free throws and you're going to have to hit standstill three-point jump shots. He just merely kind of repeated himself. And what did Kobe Bryant do? What was his response to his coach's admonition? He went out after that meeting, and he took 1,000 standstill three-point jump shots. Not just one day, according to Coach K. Every day. Every day. The guy went out there on his own and took 1,000 standstill three-point jump shots. <laughs> There's not many people who have that kind of appetite, who have that kind of energy. But his response to the obedience of his coach, to the, to the wisdom of his coach, was to go out there and to do it. You know, the Lord God gives us what we should pray for. Do you know that all prayer that's answered by God should start with God? It really should. He has a desire for you. Philippians 2.13 says, God is at work within you both to will and and to do of his good pleasure. That's where it starts. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. It doesn't come from you. You don't conjure them up. It's not about the kingdom of this world. It's about his kingdom. He puts it in your heart. And then it's up to you to continue on and begin to pray those desires into fruition. So let me give you just a quick example in Scripture. Luke chapter 18. It says this. There was a widow in the, in the city, and she kept coming to the judge and said, give me my legal protection from my opponent. And Jesus had already kind of prefaced this, was that, that this judge did not fear God and did not respect man. But this woman just kept coming persistently over and over. She kept taking her shots. She went out there, and she just took her 1,000 a day. And for a while, he was unwilling the judge, unwilling to grant her what she had asked for, but afterward he said to himself, even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. <laughs> well, the Lord is willing to give you that what he places in your heart to pray into fruition. He is willing to do that. But you are going to get attacked by spiritual forces. There is going to be a battle. We learn in the Old Testament that da Daniel would pray for one thing. Three weeks later, it finally gets answered. Why? What took so long? Spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what takes long. So Kobe Bryant understands in the natural that I got to go out there and I got to take my jump shots over and over and over again. In an empty stadium when nobody's there cheering me on and nobody's there taking pictures, it's just me and my, and my game. Well, you, <laughs> without the lights and cameras in your face, getting along with God and going to God over and over again. You're not just making him repeat. You're not just using certain phrases that kind of conjure up power. No, you're seeking his heart. And every time you seek God's heart, he begins to shave off the selfishness if you allow him. And so that prayer gets whittled to what exactly, it started off as maybe your desire, but God whittles it around and changes it to his desire. And we get to pray that into fruition. It takes time, it takes effort. Just like Kobe, he needed not only to go out and take 1,000 per day, but he had to take 1,000 of great technique shots. You don't want to have poor technique. You want to go into your prayer life the same way. You want to understand what's important to God. 
what is a what is a right kind of prayer? Is it about me? Or is it about the advancement of his kingdom? We have to learn that as we go along. And God begins to whittle away all the, the rough edges and create something through the crucible of prayer and all that time and all that effort to something that's really pleasing to him. And then to see that thing come alive. And then you and I get to share in that desire coming to fruition. Man, why wouldn't we pray? Why wouldn't we have the appetite that a young Kobe Bryant had for a thousand jump shots a day? What gave Kobe a, that, that kind of appetite? He could see what the Olympic gold medal team looked like. He could see the final game. He could see winning the championship. He could see that ahead. Well, that's all in the natural. Those things in itself won't fulfill you. But the stuff that God gives us to pray about, we gotta be able to see things ahead. I'm not talking about naming and claiming. I'm talking about doing the hard work every single day, going before the Lord and letting him shape and reshape your desires so that you begin to pray those things into fruition that God has really placed there from the get-go. Listen, have a great time in prayer. As you read the word of God, let him fill you up with his desires and take each one accordingly to the Lord with time and repetition. God bless you.